Media Encoder is one of those programs that we just take for granted. We fire it off from our timeline, get it into the queue, and hit go. And that's generally it. But there is a way to make Media Encoder more powerful, smarter, and ultimately more efficient. Let's find out how. Hey, welcome to DigiPro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson, and here we work smarter, not harder. That's why you need to hit the subscribe button so that you're the first to know when a new tip or trick from us has landed. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about Media Encoder. We're talking about ways to make Media Encoder much more powerful, more efficient for you. And I've got a couple of tweaks, tips, that are rounded into two big tips, but there's a little parts within them. Um, and the first part, let's get to it, the first part is that you need to be using presets. Now you probably already have those in Premiere or After Effects, but you can use those same ones in Media Encoder or you can set your own from scratch right now. So let's just have a look at that because we're gonna be using presets in the rest of this. So it's very important that we know how to do it here. So we just go and set up a new preset and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a preset for our client deliverables and our master files. And the client deliverables are probably gonna be something like a H.264 in a MP4 wrapper and your finals, let's say we're gonna to want to go Apple ProRes HQ so that you have that high quality if you need to go back to it and make another copy. Okay, so those are the formats that we want. We're gonna make a preset for both of those formats and we're gonna name them client and final. Great, okay, so we have those. What can we do with these now? Well, the best thing about this is that once you've fired off that timeline from Premiere into your queue in Media Encoder, you don't just have to stop at that one encode. That queue, that queue can have multiple encodes at the same time. So you can drag that preset onto that encode and your client and your final and whatever other preset you want to make and it will encode them all at the same time. Rather than going one by one through the queue, you can make Media Encoder encode all of those files at the same time. That's just saving time right there. The way that it does it is because it's rendering those files anyway. It can just format them in different codecs and wrappers because it's already rendered those frames. So why go and make it render every single time new frames when you can just take those rendered frames and put them in a different codec and wrapper? It might slow down Media Encoder just a little bit whilst it's doing all of them at the same time, but ultimately it's faster overall. And that is one very big tip for using Media Encoder. It is gonna save you time and it is gonna make you more efficient. The second part to this is watch folders. Now you've probably heard of watch folders before. If you haven't, watch folders are essentially a folder somewhere on a disk, on an external disk, on your local machine, wherever it might be, that you drag and drop media into. And Media Encoder is watching that folder the whole time. That's why it's called a watch folder. And what it does is whenever you drop some media into that folder, it will then start to ingest and transcode that footage into whatever output settings that you want it to, which is great when you've got raw footage from your camera that you want to edit with, but you don't want to edit with the raw footage, you want to make an intermediate codec format. You can just drop it into that watch folder and it will do it for you automatically in the background. You don't need to drag those files into the queue and make settings for all of those you can just drag them into the watch folder and it will do it for you. Now you do need to make sure that you have a preset made for ingesting. So if you just go back to the presets, make a new preset and call it ingest with whatever settings that you want it to ingest so that you have an intermediate codec that you like to use, whether that's ProRes or DNX HD or something along those lines, then make that, call it ingest and you can set your watch folder to use those settings every time. You then have Media Encoder working for you after you've shot, you have Media Encoder working for you after your edit, and your deliverables are all being fired out at the same time. Your ingesting is doing it in the background. That means you have tons more time to be getting on with creative tasks, to be getting on with other organizational tasks. You've got extra time in your day that you didn't have before. That is making you more efficient. That is working smarter and not harder. 
There are other things that Media Encoder can do that you probably haven't tried yet. You can use it to upload to an FTP server if you have one, or if your client has one that you can deliver there straight to rather than delivering it to an FTP afterwards. You can add a burn in time code straight in After Effects without having to go through Premiere first. So if you're delivering to a client and they want to pick out specific time codes, then you can do that. You can have burn-ins, you can have FTP server uploads. There are many, many different ways to use Media Encoder. But the first two that I've said here, those are big ones. Those are time-saving changes. And it doesn't take a lot to do. It doesn't take a lot to set those up at all. But it will have great impact on your efficiency. And that's why you need to hit that subscribe button. Because tips like this, tips like this are gonna save you time and make you more efficient, leaving you with more time to be more creative, to take your creativity to the next level. We'll see you next time.